All right, so good morning. Um, this is topic three, day four, vertical line test and graphing over a domain. Uh, today's notes are not super algebraic, so that'll be a nice break from what we've been doing. Okay, so Roman numeral one is the vertical line test, and it's for graphs. You use it on graphs of pretty much anything. Vertical line test for graphs. All right, here's the rule. The rule says if a vertical line, if a vertical line crosses a graph, if a vertical line crosses a graph, in, and here's the important part, two or more places, two or more places, the graph is not a function. So if a vertical line crosses a graph in two or more places, the graph is not a function. Okay, so down in the bottom part of your paper, I want you to draw four grids, and that's gonna, uh, and with a little bit of space around them. So four big plus signs using your ruler. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a graph on here, decide if it's a function, and then we'll add or subtract a piece of it and decide if it's still a function or still not a function. Okay, so on the first graphing grid, uh, one, two, three, four, five, at negative five on the x-axis, I want you to put a dot, one, two, three, four, five, and up at five, the y-intercept, I want you to put a dot, and then I want you to put a dot through the corners of the squares in between the two. Okay, when you do the vertical line test, you can actually physically draw the lines, or you can imagine them both work. So um, if we draw a vertical line, which is a straight up and down line, it crosses one time, and so if you can see that if I draw vertical lines through each of the points, it's only going to cross one time. Now, sometimes a vertical line will miss the points, like that one. That's okay. As long as it doesn't cross two or more times, it's still a function. So in its current configuration, this graph is a function. Now, what would make it not a function? So this is where I want you to switch colors of ink. And we're going to put a point directly above the negative 5, which is the point negative 5, 2. The black one that we already drew is negative 5, 0. So with this new point, I now have a point directly over a point. If I draw a line through those two points, it crosses one, two times. So according to the vertical line test, if it crosses two points at the same time, it is not a function. And if you look at the coordinates of those points, it actually makes a lot of sense um, because negative five goes with a two, and then negative 5 also goes with a 0. And we know that for functions, each x can only go with one y. So the points also reinforce that it's not a function. All right, let's go on to the second graph. Um, 
at negative three up two, I want you to draw a circle. Two spaces above it, draw a dot. And then I don't care what, how the angle goes, but you're gonna draw an angled arrow from the circle and then a little horizontal arrow from the point. Okay, so you can tell, excuse me, you can tell that if you draw a line through this part of the graph, it's only ever gonna cross that slanted line one time. You can also tell that if you're in the up and down part of the graph, or in the, sorry, the horizontal part of the graph, you're going to draw a line and it will only cross one time. The real question is right here, where you have a, a closed point over an open point, is that crossing more than once? Well, if we draw a line through this, the closed point is there, the open point is not. Remember, an open point is the boundary. It is not in and of itself part of the line, which is why it's an open point. So this is still only crossing one time. It crosses that point, and then it, there isn't a point there. So right now, this graph is a function. All right, what would make it not a function is if we put a dot somewhere out here and a horizontal line heading to the left. With this new line, now, when I draw a vertical line, it crosses the black line and it crosses the red line. So it crosses more than once. So if the red line is part of this graph, then it is not a function. All right, let's go down to this one. Okay, I'm going to draw the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. It's got a point at zero, zero, and then it goes through the corners and makes a V. It goes through the corners of the squares and it makes a V. Okay, using the vertical line test, I want you to decide if this is a function or not a function. All right, so. If I draw a vertical line, it's gonna cross once there, once there, once there, and it's, it's only ever gonna cross one time. So yes, this is a function. Okay, last one of these, We're, I'm going to graph y equals x plus three. This is a line that crosses at three on the y-axis, and its intercept is negative three on the x, so just draw your line through those two points. Okay, you probably recognize this type of equation. This is y equals mx plus b, which is a line. As you can see using vertical line test, that vertical line only crosses once, that only crosses once, 
that only crosses once. A vertical line is only ever going to cross once. So this is a function. In fact, any line that has a slope is automatically a function, no matter what it is. As long as it has a slope, one, two, three, four, negative one, negative a half, any slope, it's automatically going to be a function. And another little piece of information you're going to need in the near future, the domain of that graph, which is the set of all x values, because it goes infinitely to the left, infinitely to the right, and has infinite points on the line, um, the domain is all real numbers. as long as it has a slope. The range, because the arrows go up and down infinitely in both directions, is also all real numbers. So any line with a slope has domain and range of all real numbers, and it's a function. All right, flip the page. We're going to do the second part of the notes today, which is graphing over a domain. This is a really easy skill that surprisingly messes people up. And I have never figured out quite why. So we'll, we'll see if we can iron that out today. So this is Roman number two. Uh, we're going to graph a function with a given domain. So normally our line would have a domain of infinite numbers. But um, in this case, they're going to limit what you can graph and what you can't graph on that line. So for example, let's say you've got f of x equals x minus 2. And then they're going to tell you that the domain of this line in roster notation is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. All right, and we are going to do a graph. So using your straight edge. I want you to draw a fairly large graph here. On the right side. On the left, we're going to make an extended H chart, which is what we would do automatically when we're graphing a line. And you know that F of X is just function notation for a Y. This is just Y equals MX plus B form. So y equals x minus 2. So the, the, the way a, a given domain limits what you do is normally you would get to pick any x you wanted and get three good points and draw your line. So the domain says you can't pick anything that you want. You can only pick these numbers. So in your x values, because domain is the set of all x's, set of all x's, you're going to put these five numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And you're going to find points for those. So substitute the x in, calculate the y. So negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And 2 minus 2 is 0. So we've got these points. Now we're going to graph those. So go ahead and we're going to plot these five points on the graph and just make a dot with them. So negative 2, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Go ahead and plot these points.
Okay, so because we have a, what's called a restricted domain, these five numbers, you have only five x values and no points in between. So we're not going to draw a line that shows infinite points because this line doesn't have infinite points. It only has five. And you're done. That's it. That's the graph. So remember, no line <laughs> when you are graphing something with a specific domain. As a line means you have infinite values in between the points you chose to graph. All right, that is the end of the notes. I hope that was pretty clear.